So this is just a quick tutorial on how to make your own battery cables. And this is what I found worked really well for me and also just want to talk about different types of tools that can make your life easier. So obviously uh, the first thing you know that you do when you want to make a new battery cable, uh, be it a power battery cable for power to your new amplifier or if you're moving your battery, you know, from like for me I'm moving my battery from the back of the car to the front. So I need to make a whole new battery cables, different lengths, different sizes, that kind of thing. So the first thing you want to do is get some stock battery cable. Um, you want to have different size gauges. This is a, an 8 gauge and this is for um, power to an amplifier. Um, that's because this, the amplifier is you know, max 80 amps, so this wire is sufficient to carry that. You don't need anything bigger, but you don't want anything smaller. Um, for actual, actual battery, you know, high power output, you need something of a bigger size something like maybe this. This is a two gauge uh, battery cable so you can see it's much thicker and then for you know serious heavy duty stuff you can go to you know, one or zero gauge. So the first thing you do is measure out you know how much cable you need and I tend to do this not with the actual cable itself but just with a rope. So I, I lay the rope down to, you know in the car figure out how the, the cable is going to snake around throughout the car and see how long you know, of a, a battery cable I need. I don't want to cut this and then realize it's too short and then have to cut it all again and waste that or even make it too long and then have to cut it shorter in the final stages of installation. So once we decide you know, length, we cut it to size with scissors and then we have to strip the end. So to strip the end uh, I just make use of a nice pair of sharp you know, X-Acto knife and you just have to, you know, very lightly cut the plastic all the way around um, the end of the cable here until you can pull it off. And the end result is something like this. So you have an area of exposed uh, copper wire. You can twist it if you like just to make it nice and organized. Uh, if you cut too deep, what you're actually going to do is cut some of the strands and those are just going to fall off and you're actually losing that, you know, current uh, carrying capability. So you don't want to cut those off if you, if you can. You want to be very gentle and just take your time. Uh, the next thing is to get a compression lug. So these are electric compression lugs that you can buy from McMaster Car. Uh, they come in different sizes. So you can see here uh, these are the very large ones for one zero gauge. Uh, we have medium sized ones for two gauge and then we have the smaller ones for eight gauge. So you need to get the right size uh, for your gauge wire. And what you do here, um, you know, this is a very short cable, so I don't have to worry about sliding on my shrink tubing for this one because I, you know, I can put the lug on and then come from the other end. But if you have a very long cable, what you want to do first, actually, before putting this lug on, is put the appropriate sized uh, shrink, uh, shrink tubing. So you can see here I have an assortment of different sizes. And what I want to do is I want to choose a tubing that can just fit over this lug. Uh, so this, this one's a, a pretty tight fit, so I probably want to go one size larger uh, because these things shrink quite a bit. So you can see here, this one fits nice and smoothly. So cut a piece off. You, know, you don't need too much, but you want to be able to, to cover uh, this sort of bottom portion of the lug to make a nice clean uh, connection so no short circuits are going to happen. So you slide that over first. And now we can put the compression lug on. So Again, you can twist the end of the wire here if you want, just to try and clean up those, um, those strands so that you don't catch them while you're putting the lug on. And here is the really key part. This is where you need, you know, this is where you can cheap out and just use a pair of pliers and, and you know, squish this and have a crappy job. Or you can buy the right tool and get a really nice finished job. And this is called a hammer crimp. And why it's called a hammer crimp is once it's in place, you can smack the top here with a hammer and crimp this compression lug. Um, I don't use this with a hammer. I think that that's kind of a, a dangerous and sort of brute force technique. The better way I've found is using a vise. So what you can do here, you can lock this uh, hammer crimp up in place. You then place the lug with the wire installed in, inside. There's a little groove and depression in this uh, hammer crimp that's designed to carry these lugs. And then you let it go down. And so now here, instead of actually just whacking it with a hammer, which you could do if you don't have a, a large vise, um, what I do is I make use 
of uh, my big my big desk vise. So we're going to take a look here. And this gives a, a better end result. It's a much more controlled technique. You can really control slowly this crimping process. So we just got to open it up and get this in place. So we just tighten it a little bit just to hold it in place. Uh, we want to make sure the wire is still fully seated. So let's see if we can get a better, a better angle on here. Okay, so everything's installed here. We make sure that before we start crimping, the wire is still seated in the compression lug. Now everything looks pretty good. So now we can start tightening slowly at first. And we can see how much of a crimp we're getting. And we can go quite a bit. Now that's probably about good enough. Now be careful here when you're loosening it up, it will fall out. Okay, so you can see here what we've done is we've crushed this compression lug and we've crimped it. And the, the cool thing about this tool is because it has a specific design in the, in the base here, the actual crimp that we get is a, of, of a specific shape. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So let's take this out. So I don't know if you can see that. Maybe we can zoom in here. So you can see here a very distinct crimp on this compression lug. And now what we can do here is slide the heat shrink tubing over and make use of a heat gun. So I use a, a Wagner heat gun, uh, sort of the pistol grip style. Makes it nice and easy to shrink this heat, heat shrink tubing. And this just cleans up the connection, you know, insulates it from any short circuits. And there we go. A nice crimped battery cable. It's nice and strong. This thing's never going to give up on you. It was nice and easy. I mean, even moving the camera around, this took me, what, uh, two or three minutes. If you, without a camera, you can do this in, you know, 40 seconds. And there you are, good to go.